So today I'm going to print a tiny house on a 3D printer, as you can see here. So here I'm running uh, the MakerBot software that comes with the printer. Um, what I've done is exported part of the tiny house um, as an STL file to the MakerBot software. Um, and you basically just import um, this file you saved out from the other modeling software that you may be using. So what you need to do uh, once you've added your model is you've got a few functions here so you can move you can move your house well your object in this case around the print bed which is represented by by this area here this darker area uh, next you can turn so if your object comes in say around the wrong way like that um, it's quite easy to flip it around and turn it uh, you can also scale your object um, because I've been modeling my house at real size so roughly from here to here is 8 meters that's never going to fit on a 3D printer so I've scaled this um, my model down to 2% so once you're happy with your orientation of your object um, it's as simple as clicking make um, you've got a number of options here which you can tweak and adjust um, some of the more simple things is to set your uh, resolution or quality so this is basically changing um, the thickness of your layers you print so at high quality you're going to point, print 0.1 of a millimeter um, I've chosen to set this at low since uh, this house uh, doesn't need to be super accurate or anything it's more of a visual model um, so to make it faster um, and use less material I've chosen to go with a low resolution at 0.3 of a millimeter. So once you're, once you're happy with your settings you've selected here um, sometimes it can be a bit of trial and error um, we can go export so now this produces a preview of what is going to be printed out so what you can do here is look around and make sure uh, those those options you set, selected previous are going to work what you can do is cut down through the model and see all the layers so what you can do here is zoom in now you can see through these cupboards here is this here is a solid object um, this infill was set to 10 percent so it's only going to fill 10 percent and that's what these hexagons here are so it doesn't actually print if you don't want it to uh, solid material inside solids um, so this this speeds up the time of the print and reduces the material uh, you can see here where the door is uh, if I just slice that back up a bit you can see the door there see I've turned support material on um, so this means it prints it prints basically a very thin layer of material through this so it can hold up this part of the wall and what you can do when this is printed out is break this material out so at the rear of the printer here we've got a spool of plastic filament in this case we're using ABS uh, this feeds up through this tube here up to the printing head uh, the way to think about the printing head is basically a complex hot glue gun so this plastic gets pulled through here and then gets heated at the at the tip this melts the plastic and lays the plastic down as you can see now in layers uh, this is currently laying plastic down in 0.3 of a millimeter layers the computer with the software is telling uh, the extruder head where to lay the plastic. See it's just just about to finish up this layer now. 
and now it's flicked over the other side to start the next layer. So now we're pr uh, it's printing, it's basically a few layers up the walls and some of the cabinetry and you can see those infill hexagons so it's not printing uh, those solid components as a solid object. One layer at a time. Uh, this whole print is going to take approximately five hours to print. We're probably 30 minutes in now. So now the print is finished. It's time to remove the print from the heated bed. Uh, usually this is a bit, can get stuck down to the bed, but in this case um, it was very easy. Um, so that's the finished print. Hasn't come up too bad. Uh, you can see I to told the software to um, print support material. Um, for some reason it's chosen to print support material in this window here. As you can see, uh, this material here um, is a lot thinner than the wall sections. And, but it hasn't for some reason printed in these other um, this doorway and windows here. But you can see down in here there's a vanity and a toilet there and you can even see probably a bit hard to see but you can see the white wear in there um, the cavity the cavity for the bed under here so I mean it gives a pretty good representation of what this place is going to look like um, it's also pretty strong considering that's only 10% info giving that a good twist um, so now I just really need to clean this up, which is, sometimes you can do it with your fingers, sometimes a knife, just to clean up the support material. Um, and now I need to print the trailer and the roof. So now I add all the parts together. I've also printed the roof as well, which you'll see in a sec. So there's the trailer, here's, here's the house module which I've pulled out all the support material um, reasonably well. Now I could print other things in here as well, I could print tables and chairs uh, etc. About this stage I'll just leave it at this, gives you a pretty good idea of space. We plonk that on there. Um, I could have made this to, to clip in or sit in or align or something, but for simplicity I've just chose to keep it as so. It just sits on top. Uh, you can see there. And I've also printed out a simple roof structure, which is basically just... Um, a rectangular shape at present um, and that will just sit on top it is a little bit bent with the heating uh, but that just sits down there like so so that's the that's the finished house Like so. I think if I was to print it again, I would uh, turn off the supports for printing the house. Um, it was more trouble than it was worth in this case. So one day we might be able to print the whole house like that in one-to-one -one scale.